Yeah. Hi, my name is Matija Čerešnar, as already introduced, uh, from Slovenia, University of Ljubljana and the Institute for Protection of Cultural Heritage of Slovenia. Um, first, first of all, I'm thankful to Chris and the other organizers to inviting me, to giving me this opportunity to <laughs> tell about our work in Slovenia. We're going abroad uh, in place and also in time. We go to Iron Age um, sites and landscapes in Slovenia, how we approach this. Uh, mainly through remote sensing today. We, all, we do other stuff, also material analysis, but this time we go to remote sensing. You see listed few projects which are connected to our research and most important now to, uh, to introduce, maybe some of you know, some of you don't, uh, encounters and transformations in Iron Age Europe played by Ian Armit from Bradford University. It's a HERA founded project. So we are a part of it and uh, researching in many ways the Iron Age sites and landscapes in Slovenia. We moved to Slovenia to the Eastern Alps between the Pannonian Plain, between the Alps. Uh, it's part, partly also Dinaric world. So we have uh, colorful geology. We have a lot of, a lot of, um, a region which is being through historic and prehistoric times uh, crossed by many uh, different different communities and we can see that also in the Iron Age as Slovenia is a, is a place where we can trace like six different material uh, cultures in the in the Iron Age we won't talk about this it's just um, uh, introduction to our, our our studies and it's also the landscape which shapes our, our um, analysis and our research. So first we just skip into the karstic landscape. The karst after which the name karst uh, is uh, is also here in Slovenia and this is karstic landscape archaeological sites, hill forts as we saw them few years ago like hill forts are points in the landscape because this is hardly approachable landscape, hard to document. And LiDAR scanning was the first time gave us this opportunity to enter this landscape more profoundly. And as you can see, these are the traces as we can see them right now in hill forts are not points in the landscape anymore, but they are part, integral part of the landscape. We have the compar comparison what we had before the knowledge and what we had now. And then we come into other areas of Slovenia. This is Upper Carniola. Again, we have hill forts and cemeteries, which are which were just points in the landscape. And again, with LIDAR, those points, those areas are, are connected. In this, in this, in this particular uh, situation, with hollowways, which connect this uh, before uh, isolated points between each other and lead this uh, uh, this sites into a landscape which is much more colorful has many more information for, for us to to discharge but lidar is a source of new quality people who do lidar like to say but on the other hand lidar is often also a source of not really understandable quantity because we get a lot of information a lot of features a lot of data which we see that it's there, but it's not clearly understandable. And that's why in, we, I'm presenting a case study when we were, went on a journey, let's say. This is Postela in the eastern part of Slovenia. It's a hill fort over a valley of the Drava River, one of the most important rivers and one of the most important hill forts, just the basic information, just the view shed, how this hill fort is overlooking the area around it. And we got a few years ago, it was a, a, a national spatial planning which made the LIDAR for us at that moment. We were very grateful for that. And we saw the hill fort in another light. We saw the hill fort which was known, bef known before. We saw the barrows, burial mounds which were known before. But then a lot of new information arose from, from this study. We just see now in this, in this uh, slide, we see the hollowways which appeared. Some are 
totally natural, uh, but some of them probably showing the main roots of communication. I'm sorry. And this, this is how we uh, see the site right now. But our, our, our study is not clearly just archaeological and remote sensing. We included also geologists which work with us to uh, understand the features which we see. Some of the greens are artificially made. We see the, the red lines, the red full lines, and the red dot, dotted lines, which were but the geologists interpreted as uh, breaks in, in geology. We wanted to understand the geology to, f to see how archaeology was built um, upon this uh, geology. And we checked this also with geophysical methods. For in this instance, we used the uh, 50 megahertz antenna, rough terrain antenna, uh, to see what's beside, beneath the, 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 uh, in the geology. This means we, we don't get the strip of archaeology. Uh, the first two meters, three meters of information are lost here. But we see what's going on besides that, beneath that. And we saw that these two lines, we see one red line and one dotted line here. We saw that these are really geological breaks, which probably also led to um, uh, uh, here, there was a, probably a break in the early phase of the settlement where a part of the rampart was collapsed and a second rampart had to be built here. So we checked also, in many occasions we hear that the hill forts have ramparts where geology is used to put the ramparts on the breaks of geology. We checked also this on this part of the rampart uh, with the same antenna and we found out, this, as you can see it here, the geology is nearest to the surface right beneath the rampart. So it was proven that also in this occasion uh, we have the same situation going on. We moved fur further also with the LiDAR studies. We checked all the features uh, which we saw on the LiDAR with ground truthing. We, some of the features we knew already, some are new, some of the features on the LiDAR uh, weren't features which we encountered like earthly features but were uh, piles of wood stacked in the woodland because this is everything covered with woodland and so on. Uh, one of the most important data was that every tumulus has a ditch around it and then like we can see it here and we have younger later tumuli put in on his ditch. That means that we got from not knowing that we can trace the chronology of the tumuli just by uh, uh, seeing them in the, in the, on the LiDAR scanning, we can build up a horizontal chronology also by, uh, by approaching from this direction. And, but we did a lot of uh, geophysics, uh, resistivity, magnetics, and, uh, and uh, ray, ground penetrating radar on this uh, site. And I'm just showing you some of the levels of new information which we added to the, to the LiDAR data. This is, for instance, the results of magnetic method, as you can see it here. But if we have only one layer, looking only at one layer, it's okay, we have information. We see that there are uh, round uh, structures which are round. We see some linear magnetic anomalies which we thought interesting. There could be a uh, path le leading to the biggest tumulus here. We checked it with ground truthing and that was only, um, sadly for us, just geology. But it is good to integrate different layers of information. So we see when we put this magnetic data on the LiDAR, we can see that it is really the tumuli having the ditches around it and having structures in the, in the center part of the tumuli. The same information also coming from the GPR method. We also integrated this method and it shows us partly the, the structures from the central of the tumulu, tumulus, which are stone structures, partly also other structures because it's the geolo geological basement here, which is also very near to the surface. We checked all the data also by ground truthing, partly by drilling, partly by uh, small trenches excavation, but also with measuring on the surface magnetic susceptibility, which is uh, another um, 
um, method of uh, geophysical method, complementary to the uh, to the magnetic method. So we checked all the features which we understood or thought we understood looked linear, and in many occasions we were a little bit disappointed because features which we thought we we clearly understand as as uh, human made from archaeological. Um, uh, point of view were then uh, bound to geology, but then some features as this one, which was some amorphic feature on, so, seen on the magnetic uh, results. We checked it also with the uh, uh, magnetic susceptibility. You see amorphous features, and we did a uh, test trench of this feature because we didn't know uh, how to understand it. We saw it's a big big uh, layer of burnt cremated bone, animal bone, with a, uh, com and a compact layer, 20 centimeters of uh, pottery. This is uh, something, some new feature, which we didn't, um, never occurred on this, uh, in, in this Iron Age uh, hill forts or burial, burial areas. Never, never in, in our region. So, we have to check all the all the information. Although we think we know what they are, these are assumptions. We can have different layers of information, getting them from lidar, getting them from different geophysical methods. But going into the earth gives give us a new layer of information, which is very important to understand the others. We did another step forward also. Um, in a part which was known as probably uh, here um, flat burial mount, bur burial ground for flat cremation graves. We knew about 15 graves which were found here and then we do did the, the geophysical research of the wider um, area and then we checked one of the anomalies. Anomalies weren't as we knew them before on other parts of the of the site, there are dots, dots, dotted anomalies. And we checked one of them, as, as you can see, it's a flat cremation grave. And then we've checked a little bit bigger trench, five by five meters. We excavated uh, graves, quite in interesting. But when we saw, we expected something else because the first results looked like that. We expected graves like let's say five graves we got six graves but they didn't match the first uh, an an analysis of the of the magnetic method so by doing uh, further analysis uh, we found with an analytic signal uh, we somehow managed to see the majority of the graves so we ground truthed the our results and then shaped the results by doing the excavations. In this manner, we try to achieve as accurate results as they can be. And so we interpreted that uh, the, we, we uh, took the same an analytic flow for the whole uh, uh, burial, burial grounds. So we, th we think that we have around, we are very modest in the number, like at least 80 graves in this, uh, in this area. Before that, we knew about 15. And it changes also the perspective, how we understand the early Iron Age in Slovenia, in this part of Slovenia, but I'm not going into that details now. This is just some, some uh, uh, different perspective. We did also something in the settlement, but promising results, first results, but we're going into that next year. This is state of research. As you can see here, linear features quite promising for us. We did some basic GIS analysis on this site because we had this information also for uh, geology or around. We played about process routes because we know about this procedures, how they, how they uh, are shown, for instance, on situl art, and we try to uh, remodel these occasions where people approached a hill fort prominent like that. Uh, but do we really understand what, what the uh, Iron Age landscape looks like? In this uh, occasion of Postela, we think um, 
we understand a piece of it. But then when you come to other um, sites like Veliki Vinivar, we see this um, nearer um, situations is quite similar to the one uh, as we see at Bustela. We have a hill fort and then we have groups, bigger, smaller groups, processional roads uh, connected to the ritual landscape, burial mounds. But then we have the broader region the broader area which is full of burial mounds, which is full of mounds, which we don't really know what they are. Because some of them in other sites were checked also by digging, by geophysics, and they, they do not bury uh, uh, graves. They, there are some other features in the landscape, which for now, for un our knowledge, escape our knowledge, escape our understanding. We just cannot trace their meaning in the landscape. But as, as we see, the Iron Age landscape is full of different features. And if we go even further, we have, uh, this is national spatial planning data. Again, we didn't, didn't uh, purchase this for our research. This area in, in uh, Bela Krajina, as you see, uh, southern Slovenia. We have three sites, Iron Age sites in the vicinity, and then we have a very hostile landscape. It's a landscape, even now, today, very rarely settled. It's full of sinkholes, as you can see it now, here on the feature. But we have a lot of hollowways, a lot of traces showing uh, that people moved through this area. I, I cannot say they moved only in the Iron Age or whatever <laughs> after that. People are moving through, through this landscape through ages. But then we come across new things which, which occur on some elevated uh, areas. Like these two mounds. I wouldn't say burial, I wouldn't dare to say burial mounds. As you can see them, it's the most prominent hill, just raising just a little bit above, above the valleys. And it looks like this is not uh, the only one occasion where there, that appears. You can see it from other directions. But when we did the analysis of this area, we saw this area is full of hollowways, of traces of people moving through this environment. And we have on some prominent locations standing above the ground, we saw this tumuli. I'm not in any way, I wouldn't dare to say this is the Iron Age landscape as we see it right now. This is the former landscape which is being used right now also. But some of the, some of the sites, some of the structures uh, give us the hints about what was going on in the, in the past. And this way which we are going, I don't say it's, it's the right way. We, we know that we have a lot of steps to do. Uh, we have advanced geophysical methods used. We can use on-site or in the, in the broader region to get a new in view in, into, the, into some of the uh, locations. We have geochemical methods we, which we will use this year on, on the site of Postela. We have to do further ground truthing to understand the features. But I'm just, I'm just trying to put out that it's whatever we do, whatever we think is just one layer of, of understanding. There is so much information out there, and someti sometimes we are just too early with the conclusions we, we, we say, with the con conclusions we would like to have as this is it, the interpretation we are having, it's, it's the only right. There's each layer of new data, which every, wherever from it emerges, gives us newer information for the understanding of sites, landscape, and in the end, we are trying to understand people who were living in those landscapes in, in these distant uh, times. And is this the right way to go? I'm asking you, but one of the answers, the right way, the correct way, the only way does not exist, was already said by a wise man. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>